Now let's take a look at a more sophisticated example. You've had a chance to work with some simpler ones. Now we're going to take a look at how the operons can interact with each other to create a more uh, tricky way to determine the outcomes. So what I want to see here is, um, again, we've got the same symbols, uh, no protein produced, uh, some protein and lots of protein. And we can look at these genotypes that we have. Let me just pick up uh, some ink here. Um, and if you look at this first example here, we've got a perfectly good promoter. The operator is working fine. That means that a, uh, a repressor protein can bind to it. And then we've got functional beta-galactosidase and permease genes. Now this symbol here uh, stands for super repressor. Now remember that repressor proteins have two active sites. And on one site, they're able to bind to the operator, and that's this region right here. In other cases, they also have to be able to bind the inducer. And you'll remember for the LAC operon, this inducer is allolactose. The IS mutation means that the repressor does not identify the allolactose. And that means it's able to bind to the operator no problem, but it can't bind the allolactose. That means it doesn't change its shape and it can never leave the operator region. So if that's the case, this is going to be able to move over onto the operator region and permanently bind to it, basically eliminating all but the leakiness feature of the operon. So that means we aren't going to get beta-galactosidase or permease under any circumstance. We've permanently turned this off because of the super repressor. For the next example, we're going to look at the super repressor again, but here I've mutated the operator region. What this means is, although this can no longer identify the inducer, it can't see the allolactose, it also can't recognize this operator. This operator has a different nucleotide sequence and no longer is able to work with this. So this is basically irrelevant. So what we have is what looks like a constitutive operon. We're able to constantly transcribe this uh, under all, all conditions. Now, we do see that there is a defective permease, and so we're not going to have the permease working like this. And we're going to have constant production of the beta-galactosidase, the Z. So I'm going to put a plus into each of these and over here. And remember that if glucose is absent, that means that we have that hunger signal, the CAP-CAMP complex constantly being produced. So in any column where glucose is absent, that means that we've got an extra amount of transcription occurring. Here we've got two operons residing in the exact same cell, and so we can see there's a transacting effect possible. Transacting means that if you look at this repressor protein, it's perfectly functional, and this repressor protein doesn't work at all. Now even though we've indicated that this repressor protein that is working is on the same line of DNA as all the other elements, it also has the capability of working on this operator over here. So this is a diffusible factor or transacting factor. It doesn't have to be right next to the elements it controls and it can bind to both of these. Now obviously this top one isn't going to work. This is a constitutive operator, it's like an O minus, and so that means we're not able to bind to it, but not from any failing of this, uh, this protein, but because it's not able to recognize this genetic sequence right here. Now over here we do see a nice freebie. We see that there's a promoter that's defective on this bottom one, and so I'm going to scratch out that bottom one because without a promoter you can't transcribe this at all. So this is a cis acting factor. It's going to affect those elements that are directly connected to it and therefore it won't work. Now over here we've got a good promoter, we've got beta-galactosidase and, and permease working just fine, and this is no longer able to affect the, the, the cell. So we're going to see lots of transcription occurring for the beta-galactosidase, and because the permease is working in this example, we get those. We also get those for this one as well. And we're going to have transcription occurring here, but um, only at a regular level because the glucose is not going to allow the CAP-CAMP complex to, to bind. Now finally in this example here, we've got a super repressor here, which will be able to diffuse over and bind to this top operator, so that'll basically turn it off 
uh, basically permanently because it is a super oppressor and it's not going to be able to work on this one. It's not able to bind to that one right there. This normal repressor protein uh, will be sort of, it's called trans-recessive. It's not able to um, out-compete out the super oppressor. Uh, once again, we've got a polar effect over here, so let's get rid of the, the, this bottom one right here. So even though it's constantly producing, it's not going to produce the um, beta-galactosidase. Uh, and what we have here is a, an operon that's um, turned off all the time. The super repressor will land on this operator here. It won't leave it, and we're not really going to have anything aside from the leakiness that would occur. So let's get rid of that one. So this is a complete answer using logic to figure out how to put together all of those different parts. Uh, hopefully it's a good example for you, and good luck. Remember, don't try to memorize the patterns. Try to think about how all the bits work together.